Welcome back. Today, the Madras High Court ordered the removal of encroachments on the pavement of the busy NSC Bose Road near the Madras High Court. The order came in the sub-application filed by a social activist, Traffic Ramaswamy, a few years ago, in which many orders were in fact passed by the Madras High Court but were just not implemented. Mr. Ramaswamy claims that there are hundreds of shops on the pavements of uh, the street, leading to a huge amount of confusion and congestion. The court has now ordered that the shops be removed in two weeks' time. In the second bench, as per the orders of the Walking Company chairman on 2-10-2010, that NSC Bose Road, all occurs should be removed and nobody should be allowed to continue walking in that area as per the Supreme Court direction. Uh, the Facebook of uh, Chennai City Traffic Police, one of the comments by one of the citizens on that with regard to this payment encroachment, one of the citizens wrote that I will never buy a product from a shop which has encroached on the payment. That's his way of looking at it. So what I am saying is that it, it has to be done jointly. The shop owner has to come up with us. The normal citizen has to come with us and then we have to enforce. Together we can make a greater impact. Alone we will make a small impact. Moving to some other developments from the court today, the Madras High Court has dismissed a public interest litigation filed by S. Tanish Kodi who wanted the three jewellery boxes deposited by Pudukotai Samsthanam. The petitioner claimed that the jewellery worth several crores went missing from the nationalised bank where it was deposited. However, one of the descendants of the Pudukotai Rajai family countered the allegations of the petitioner. Meanwhile, the Trichy district collector also filed a counter saying that the manager of the branch of the State Bank of India had informed her through a letter that the three boxes were safe, accepting the version of the district collector on behalf of the state government and the bank's version about safety of the deposited jewellery. The first bench dismissed the PIL, but the case of the missing treasures had created a lot of controversy as it involved the former Trichy mayor who is a descendant of the erstwhile royal dynasty. Uh, one Tani Kodi filed uh, public interest litigation before first bench of the Madras High Court, Honorable Madras High Court. Uh, he claimed the private property of Pudukota is Samasthanam. Uh, he claimed and uh, gave the direction to Government of India to acquire the property from the Pudukota is Samasthanam. But the court denied, denied his plea and also dismissed it. In between, the public interest litigation petitioner Tani Kodi um, make a vexatious allegation against my client Rani Ramathevi before this honorable court. We filed the valid counter affidavit and also the government side filed the counter affidavit. In the counter affidavit of the government, they say uh, the all soul boxes safely custody in the Cantonment branch of State Bank is very correct. They filed the counter affidavit. Consider all counter affidavits and petition, the deep inquiry done by the busted bank. Today itself, uh, the full bench, uh, first bench, uh, dismissed the PAL, filed by the Tanikodi. Moving on. Now, Chennai will play host to a high-profile visitor tomorrow as the red carpets roll out for the big Hillary Clinton visit. A you meeting between the chief minister and the visiting U.S. Secretary of State has been confirmed by the U.S. Consulate and the chief minister's office. Ms. Clinton is also slated to address students and opinion makers in the city tomorrow at the Anna Centenary Library. Later in the evening, the top diplomat will also visit the Kalakshetra Foundation to gain a first-hand impression of the Indian classical art forms as well. Meanwhile, over our capital today, India and the United States still have major sticking points on the nuclear deal. The U.S. Secretary of State, while assuring India that the NSG restrictions on sensitive technology would not dilute India's waiver, linked that to the nuclear liability concerns that Washington has. At the joint press conference with S.M. Krishna, she said India should ratify an international convention this year on liability and ensure that India's domestic law complies with it. The problem is that while India is planning to ratify this convention, the Indian law is much tougher on suppliers which the U.S. is not happy with. But officials from India say the domestic law is compatible with the international treaty. Now, Ms. Clinton didn't mince any words when addressing the very recent Mumbai terror attacks and here's what she had to say today. 
the emphasis we placed on counterterrorism and homeland security. Uh, that is obviously an issue that is first and foremost on all of our minds after the bombings in Mumbai last week. And again, let me convey on behalf of the United States uh, our deep sympathy and our outrage uh, to the people and government of India and pledge our support to you in your fight, which is also our fight against uh, terrorism and violent extremism. Well, the top diplomat also spoke at length about the India-Pakistan's relationship and warned that Pakistani safe havens will not be tolerated. We are uh, encouraged by the uh, dialogue occurring between India and Pakistan. Uh, we do see Pakistan as a key ally in the fight against terrorism. We have made the point repeatedly uh, to our Pakistani uh, colleagues that terrorists threaten both of us. Uh, terrorists have actually killed more Pakistanis uh, in uh, bombings of uh, mosques and markets, in uh, attacks on police stations and government buildings. Uh, than Americans. And so we recognize that Pakistan must act on its own behalf first and foremost. Up ahead on the bulletin, urban legend or not, well, you have 400 rupees in hand. Well, sign up then for a month full of snooker. More when we come back.